Hello and welcome to Deliberately Creative. I'm Stephanie and I'd like to welcome you to my second video in the hashtag Love Autumn Art Art Crawl that's going on YouTube right now. If you are interested in lots of different artists and crafters doing lots of different autumn art, click on the I card up above and it will have the playlist for all of the different people who are doing fun art for the hashtag love autumn art art crawl. Now for us right now, we are going to do the doodle gem on a leaf that we did in the previous episode that's up in the I card also. If you want the speed video, go to the I card and click on the speed video. If you want the full length tutorial, stick around right here and you'll see what we're going to do. All right, guys. So here we are. We're going to get started real soon. Just remember, you can click the I card to go to the speed video if that's what you really want to see. For here, we're doing the long show, the long show. We're going to be using Prismacolors and we're doing a Boulder Opal, which is a black opal that I'm doing this time. Black is just the, it's because it's a deep, dark colored opal and it has colors right here. It has greens and blues and violets. A little bit of white and a little bit of the colorless blender will be used. I will list all of the colors down below in the description and I will mention what I'm using as we're going along. Slide those over. We're going to do this on the leaf that we did in the last episode. I love the feel on this. It holds the colored pencil so nicely and it does uh, hold the pen really well also. I've chosen to draw sort of an organic shape here. It's not a perfect circle. It's sort of more like a teardrop. I guess if I turned it upside down, it would be more of a teardrop shape. But this is an experiment, guys. I haven't drawn this opal out yet. So I'm figuring it out as I'm going along. So if I start doing a little hemming and hawing, you'll know why. But starting off here, I am going to use my indigo blue and they're all Prismacolors. And I'm going to go ahead and give it a quick outline with the indigo blue, just so that you can see the border of what I'm doing better. And this stone has some dark, dark areas. So I'm going to go ahead and just throw some of those in to give me my little boundaries and my little ideas of where the color is going. This opal has some really pretty, pretty colors and shapes. It's almost like I want to say it almost reminds me of an Aurora Northern Lights. I know this right here doesn't look anything like an Aurora, <laughs> but let's see here. We're going to go ahead and zoom in and I am going to try really hard to keep this on screen. So give me a yell if I'm going off screen, like that's really going to work, but you know, it's worth a try. So I'm going to bring in this bright green right here. It's called true green and lay in some of this bright, bright green color. Now this is a much more textured paper than what I usually color on. And the nice thing about doing it this way is you guys can see that you can make pretty stones, pretty gems on rougher paper. That's kind of my, my goal here is to show you that you can do it on rougher paper and it would look really pretty. One of the neat things about this that I really, really like 
is how the colors just pop on this toned paper like this. This is just the brown craft paper. Well, let's see here. I wanted the dark, dark green now. That's what I wanted. Dark green. The dark green to throw in here. And give it a few lines like this. Let me get my hand out of your way. We're going to get some lines going in here. I will be doing some blending. I will use a colorless blender. I will be putting a little bit of white over it just to highlight a couple spots. One of the neat things about this true green is that it is so bright and it has a white base to it so it stands out really nicely. I want some of this green around that and around the bottom of it. And I didn't realize how this paper has almost, it almost looks like it has a sparkle in it. It doesn't, it's not really sparkly, but it has a white fleck to this paper, which makes it look sparkly. That's, that's pretty. I didn't realize that when I first, when I first made it. I'm going to pull that green off of there now and go for one of my blues. And I think we're going to go with the uh, peacock blue to start off with. Lay in a bit of peacock blue. And one of the reasons for doing this opal is because I have had so many requests for another opal. I do have another, I do have an opal that I've done and it's that big orange golden flower with the opal. And I'll link that up there in the iCard also. Boy, the iCard's going to be a busy place this video. But there we go. We're getting those colors in there. Getting those colors. And now I'm going to grab the the violet. That nice violet. Get a dark violet color going in here just in spots. And it can go next to that green but I really don't want to blend blend it into that green. So when I'm I when I am blending I'm going to have to be a little bit careful so I want to keep that green nice and bright. That's sort of the fire in this one is more of that green and the little flashes of the purple and a touch of this process red, which is sort of a magenta color. And again, I need to be very careful with that next to the green, but it looks so cool going over that purple, that violet. Look at that. Process red and violet. Oh my, that is so yummy. Also going over a little bit of the peacock blue. I'm kind of taking over with this one, aren't I? I better stop using that pretty color and move on and grab another color that's just as pretty. Get a little bit of that violet blue because that can go in next to the green. Next to the green. Ooh. All right. Now I want to go ahead, maybe I won't use white, maybe I'll use this blue. Ooh, pretty. Okay, that blue is going on there really nicely. This is the light cerulean blue. 
And I'm using that like a highlight here to give me the I don't want to say well it is it's more the dull shiny highlight the nice thing about this the blue will go with all of the colors and it's not really making this turn into a pastel where if I were using the white I think I would be going much more pastel all right, so now I've got my colorless blender and I've got it in this nifty, shiny, silvery, metallic, purple, pink color. And I'm going to use the colorless blender to smooth out some of these edges. Give it a little bit more of a hardness. You'll find that if it's, if it doesn't have the paper underneath all covered it's more it's sort of softer looking but where I'm hitting it here with the colorless blender and taking out that paper effect in there make sure that I'm not muddying up that green too much. I want to keep some of those colors very clean. I will probably need to take Oh, pretty. Oh, I like how that's looking. That is looking really good. And I'm almost done doing this gem. I really don't want to go too far with that. I want to bring a little bit of this bright green back. And I want to bring a little bit of that purple. Actually, no, I want that bright blue right in there. That what light blue. Look at that. Oh. So pretty. Okay. And then just a touch in here with the colorless blender. It sort of pulls those colors together. Just pulls them together. There we go. All right. And now I am going to grab my white pen and let's see here I think we're gonna go there dot dot and down here like this I don't want to do too much I don't want to do too much all right so let we're, what we're gonna do here is we're gonna pick up these colors that we used so we used the true green, the dark green, the peacock blue, the light cerulean blue, the process red, the violet blue, the violet, and the colorless blender, and the indigo. All right, those are the colors that we used. We ended up not using these other colors that I had pulled out. That is so pretty. Oh, wow. So now, now the fun part, part two fun part. We're going to take, I'm going to zoom out for you so that you can see the whole thing. All right. Now we are going to make this into a peacock. And this is kind of the body. And we're going to be, I am going to do a light sketch of the peacock. I am going to do a light sketch with pencil. This peacock is going to be facing 
this direction up here. His neck is going to come down and join into this as his body. And it's going to come around like this. So basically, I made a circle about three quarters of an inch up was the bottom edge of that circle for the inside of his neck, about an inch and a half from the back of that circle down to meet into the body. And now I'm going to add some extra feathers. Just, just a quick, I'm not going to do all of the drawing with the pencil, but if you look here, I'm just sort of making little sections and they're just parallel lines with a rounded edge. And then I'm going to do the same on this other side, parallel lines with a rounded edge. And each of these lines is actually about the same length up here and a little bit longer down at the base. And then I will round it to meet them back into each other. And now the fun part is the tail. And the tail is going to be a doodle tail, definitely. And I'm just making sort of teardrops on stems. Teardrops on stems, making kind of like leaves. And I want another one just swinging out here. You can make this as full as you want. I don't think we want to be here too long. But I kind of like that as a general idea. His eye is going to be up here like that. It's just a little circle. And he does have a little crown. They look like little antennas, like that. So we're going to draw this in with pen, and I've got the O5 Micron, Pigma Micron 05. And now I'm not going to outline all the way around the circle for his head. I am going to outline under his cheek and around the front and his beak. I'm going to outline around the top of his head and then I'm going to join that right in to his neck. Like that. Then the line going from under his chin down to his body. And I am going to put a line around the gem because I like how that looks. And it just gives it that little tiny bit. I'm just going to color in that those little spaces that I left this time with the black. Just gives a tiny bit more shading. And I am just doodling. So remember my lines are suggestions. My pencil lines are just suggestions. And I kind of want that wing or that feather to sort of swing down underneath. You can make those choices. You can make those choices and change things up. And I wanted another feather. So I just made it. It's okay. And I wanted a little bit more end to these feathers, so I'm giving them little points. Instead of, instead of having them land just tight up against, I'm sort of making them have little points. And then swing over. Easy. Straightforward. No muss, no fuss. And let's see. 
think I'm going to have that feather come from there. And that feather. And you see these are just sort of big teardrop shapes. And I'm going to change where my feathers are. I'm not as happy with how I drew them in with the pencil. So I'm just going to draw them differently with my pen because I can. Because it's okay to change things up. It is okay to change your mind. And I'm starting that little line back behind there. I'm skipping the feather in front. And then I'm making a feather that comes there. And this time I can just draw right across the line because I'm not going to have that line going across this part of my feather. And then another one here and another one here. Let's see. Let's see. How are we doing there? I think that it needs a big one sticking off down here just because. And maybe one over here. And just for good measure, I do want another one over there. And because I did that, I think I want one right there. Now I'm going to run back up here and draw in the eye. And what I did is I put, let's zoom in on that. So to do the eye, I drew around the outside of it. And then I just drew a little line on the inside of it. And I'm leaving that, that lighter spot. I will probably put some white gel pen in that spot, but I'm going to leave it white for right now. And I'm going to give him a line in his beak. And we'll go ahead and we'll put his little bubbles on top of his head, his little crown. Just like that. And I think he's going to have a bad hair day. He's going to have one stick off the other way. Just because we can. And now, down here, ooh, look at that. Now you can see the gem really big too. So now what we're going to do is I want to put some designs in on the feathers. So I'm making these sort of long ovals and then I'm making a little circle at the base of that long oval. And remember this is a fantasy. This is a fantasy peacock. So it can be decorated any way you want. So I am just making these long ovals or ellipses and then giving them a smaller circle in them. And I'm going to do that on this side too because I want him to be semi-symmetrical doesn't mean he's going to be perfect, perfectly symmetrical, just semi. Like kind of, sort of, those words, those words that mean almost, all those words that mean almost. And up here, After you do a few of them, you get kind of, you get comfortable and it's easy. But when you're first starting, you might think, oh, how am I going to make those all even and, and exactly the same? 
And if you look at this, mine are not even, mine are not all exactly the same, and that is part of what gives it that look of being made by someone's hand. It's important. It's important. I'm going to go ahead and come on up here and I'm just going to make little sort of feather lines. Little feather lines. I'm kind of stacking them like you would bricks or stones. They're being offset or like shingles, like shingles on a fairy tale house. They're getting longer and longer as we go down because as the neck is getting thicker, the closer it gets to the body, the feathers are bigger. And now I want to go ahead and make some of his feathers stick out on his neck. So he doesn't look quite so much like a, um, oh, what do we want to say? He doesn't look like a statue. He's, he's got, he's got a little character. He is a little character. And I'm just going to put some little feather lines around his eye and maybe some feather lines over his over his beak. I'm going to leave some of this not feathered. I think I want to put the little eye on his his little head bobbers. I'm sure that there are real words to use there, but I didn't use any of them. This is going to get the circle with a circle in it. Circle, circle in it. This is where adding some more color is going to be kind of fun. And now you see the method to my madness. The colors that are in him, in his gem, are pretty much the colors I'm going to use in the little eyes on his feathers. I hope you don't mind that I'm going to go ahead and do some coloring here. This is a full, the full video. You knew when you came in that this was the, the full length tutorial video showing you what I'm doing. And I'm trying to describe what I do as I go along. I don't know exactly how it's going to end up. I'm hoping it's going to be beautiful. I think it's going to be cute. I'm just thickening up the lines a little bit around the, the spine of these feathers just to give them a little more substance. All right, so I'm going to turn this the other way. There we go. And I want to put a few of these little flyaway feathers, the little flyaways. Just for some definition, there's going to be colored pencil going in here. This is sort of the shadows in his little flyaways. Just a few shadows in his flyaway feathers. Those little fringy ones. If you look at a peacock feather, there's all those little fringy feathers that just sort of hang out in the breeze. And they're fun. Gives that soft and fluffy look. 
It actually fills in the spaces around his tail feathers and makes them lo makes his tail look so much more grand. Because if you took all of those little flyaway feathers off, his tail would really just be these big paddles at the end of long tail spines. without any substance to them because that's all flyaway feathers. They don't have the, on their decorative part of their tail, they don't have the solid feathers. They have a layer of solid feathers underneath, so they can actually fly. And when they fly, everything is all compacted together and tight to help make it into something that would be uh, more aerodynamic. Sorry about that. I did not work on it while it was down there. Yay. There we go. Okay, and I'm going to go ahead and zoom all the way back out now. Or at least most of the way back out. And the pen dries really fast, so I don't have to worry about it too much. I'm going to use my just a an artist rubber. Um, this one happens to be a Creative Mark Art Stroke Ultimate Eraser for Fine Artists. Um, not a sponsor, just an eraser that I got at Jer Jerry's Artorama Online. Not a sponsor. <laughs> but I like the eraser, it erases cleanly. It does have some crumbs, but yeah, you know, all erasers will have crumbs. But this way I can get the pencil marks off and out of the way. All right, look at that. Okay, so I do need to pull out just a little bit more. So now you can see that. He's looking kind of pretty. I'm very excited about that, actually. So what we're going to do here is I am going to go into these tail feathers. And I think that his feathers are going to be mostly green. And the eye is going to be purple and magenta. Or it's going to be, oh no, it's going to be peacock blue and magenta with a little bit of violet in it. How's that? Now this isn't a fine coloring video. This is a make, make it look nice without having to spend four hours coloring a peacock. And I have seen some amazing, amazing art done by people in coloring books. And they are making art. They are so fine and so detailed and so careful. But I'm kind of doing this as it's fun. It's, I'm not going to stress over it. I want this to be my non-stressful time. So when I'm coloring, I color for no stress. I don't worry if I go over a line. I don't worry if I pick up the wrong color and put it someplace because there's really no colors that are wrong. These are coloring pages, coloring books doodles that I've drawn. Now, because I have that color there, I'm thinking that I want to bring some of that color up into his wings. So I'm going to fill in around those sort of eye spots a wee bit with this green. This is the true green. And we're just going to fill in 
some of those places around those eye spots. And there we go. Now this peacock is what I came up with. I went online, I looked and looked at tons of different peacocks and got some ideas. This is not a copy of anybody's specific peacock, but most peacocks are fairly similar. They have shapes that are similar. And I'm just bringing some of that color up into the neck. I'm not coloring in those feathers all the way. I like this brown showing underneath of this feathers. It looks, I don't know, it, it just, it's almost like a sparkle the way the brown is showing. And one wouldn't think that brown would be like a sparkle, but it, it kind of is. I'm gonna give him green in his little eyebrows and green on the front of his face and a bit of green at the back of his head. But I'm going to leave some of that brown and I am going to give him some green up on his little head bobbers. Looking at that, I am seeing there might be another little spot right there. All right, so now I want to take some of that peacock blue and I am going to put it in on part of these the small, the eye. This is going to be my dark color, part of my dark color. I'm going to layer a couple colors in alongside of each other. They don't have to be, you know, I didn't have to have those lines drawn in at all. That was more as a placeholder to help me to remember that I was going to do something there. And here again, I'm just going to do just a bit of that blue. It's pretty, it's fun, and it's very low stress, right guys? I mean, such low stress, you don't, you can almost feel the stress just sort of flow away when you're coloring, choosing the colors, just, or just being totally random when you pick up a color and you just start coloring with it and you go, oh wow, that really turned out nice. Or, oh my goodness, I'm liking that. Now, I'm not too terribly worried that my pencil tip is not tiny. I'm not too terribly worried because this is not something to worry about. This is not the, the world will not end if I use a blunt pencil. And let's see here. I think that's what I'm going to do. Kind of color up towards it, but I'm leaving a little space that I think I'm going to drop just a spot of that process red into. That process red, which is much like a magenta. It's a very blue red, which goes so nicely with these cool colors, the violet and the peacock blue. I'm going to rotate just a smidge here. And a bit there. 
this is just fun. I hope you're having fun. If you're enjoying this video, please click like, comment, let me know. Do you want to see more things like this? More, more of these bigger type of drawings and doodles? Do you want to see more coloring? I love doing all of it. I had somebody say, you ask us what we want, but what do you want? And what I want, I just did, which was this fun project using the paper leaves, the getting a gem in it, but getting a different type of doodle going around it. Kind of like the doodle kids that I did around the mystic topaz. Now we've got this doodle peacock around a beautiful opal. And now I'm going to pick up that process red and I'm going to just go and give it a spark. That process red is just sort of a spark, a pop of color in the middle of these peacock eyes. And then I still need to choose one more color for the top sides here. And I'm thinking about it because I have not done this in color yet. And my sample that I did, I did not do the opal. I just left a placeholder. And I did not do any of the coloring on my peacock. I want to take just a few little spots of this pink up in here, just along this back edge, kind of where, a where the highlight is, just to give him a little bit more of a spark of color, just a spark. And now, hmm, should I go with the light blue? or with the green. I think I want that bright blue to be the other color on the outside of those peacock eyes. What do you think? Ooh, that is pretty. Okay. You know, this would make a really a very pretty painting. I may have to play with that idea, make it into a painting too. And because this is a doodle, I did not do a traceable on this beforehand. I might try and post something up on my blog at deliberatelycreative.blogspot.com. I usually post my videos on, or I try to. I'm not as good on my blog, except when I'm posting my traceables. I, I do get the traceables up. And they're available to all you have to do is right click the image. I just post a JPEG of my traceable type stuff. Oh, look at that. And I think I'm going to put just a little bit of that blue up here on his neck and up in his head. just to give him a little bit of something. And I think I'm actually going to throw some of that on those feather stems, those feather spines, just to give it a little more of a connection. Not a lot, not a lot, but I think that we have completed a peacock. So now I'm throwing things across. All right, this was the sample that I had done 
and posted on my Instagram where I was just testing would color pencil work right would pen work okay so that was my test I was happy with it so now we have this beautiful peacock before I okay so before I say I'm completely finished I want to put that little white spark in his eye and I think hmm maybe maybe a little bit of a line which would be like the center line of the peacock feathers sort of starting from that eye and remember this is just white this is just the white Signo Uniball pen that we used in the gym. And because I can't leave well enough alone, we're going to put a little bit on these feathers up here and that little bit on his neck there. And maybe a smidge. on a few of these feathers. Not a lot. All right, guys, like I said before, I'd like you to like, comment, tell me what you liked, tell me if you want something else, subscribe so you find out when I do new videos, and share this video with your friends. They may want to know how to do a peacock on a handmade leaf also. And as always, go out and do something creative. Take care.